The election campaign in the United Kingdom is actually a little boring. Labour has been in the lead for weeks, ever since the Conservative Prime Minister Rishi Sunak called the election, standing in the rain at the lectern in front of Downing Street No. 10. The water dripped down on him. He, well, he provided a sad picture of the state of the Conservatives there. And last Saturday, the Times newspaper published a poll in which the Tories are now in third place for the first time, I mentioned it before this week, behind Labour and behind Reform UK, the right-winger of British politics. The enfant terrible of British politics, Nigel Farage, is the party leader of the extreme right-wing party and is now running for a seat in the House of Commons. After it was announced that Reform UK is currently in second place, he quickly called a press conference. So now the time has come and this, that the signal should be it is with great joy that we have noticed that the turning point has now been reached. Farage is driving the Conservatives ahead of him once again. Previously with the topic of Brexit, now migration is his most important issue, fueled by a great deal of dissatisfaction among many voters. And he has big plans. Farage wants to become opposition leader. Starmer will have a huge majority even though he has no plan. He doesn't even mention illegal migration as priorities. That was what uh, Farage said about the head of the Labour Party. He now wants to be the voice of the opposition in Parliament and in the country. Which is unlikely to work out though. Because the British electoral system ensures that the strongest candidate wins in every constituency. Reform UK can therefore achieve 19% but only win a few, perhaps even no constituencies, which is something that Labour in particular should benefit from. That makes this election campaign at least quite exciting. Are the Conservatives not only facing a veritable defeat, but even extinction? Within the Conservative Party, MPs tell each other the story of 1993. At that time, the Conservatives suffered a terrible defeat in Canada and slipped from the governing party down to two seats. The British Conservatives are so desperate that Defence Minister Grant Shapps advocated voting Conservative so that there would be a proper opposition that could control the government. This country does not function well when we have majorities like those in Tony Blair's time or even bigger, he says. There are many hard-working conservative MPs who should be controlling the government, at least according to Sheps. In 1997, 418 Labour MPs entered the House of Commons under the newly elected Prime Minister Tony Blair, while the Conservatives had just 165. In the polls and calculations for the July 4th elections, the YouGov Polling Institute puts Labour at 422 seats and the Conservatives at 140. This would mean they would have 225 fewer seats than after the 2019 elections. But if Reform UK continues to gain ground, this prediction could shift even further. Labour is betting on change after chaos. And uh, while Rishi Sunak is trying to make promises that there will be tax cuts, and him accusing Labour of even wanting to raise taxes. Well, there's no evidence for that one, but still. But Labour leader Keir Starmer is banking on the change topic. Change after 14 years of chaos, as he describes the Conservatives' time in government because of Brexit, but also Partygate and a Prime Minister Liz Truss, who sent the financial markets into a tailspin before being disposed after just a few days in office. But Starmer's change is far from generating enthusiasm. Many Britons are fed up with politics and have lost trust, as a survey by the National Centre for Social Research found. 45% of those surveyed said they would never trust the government to put the needs of the nation above their own, regardless of which party the politicians belong to. It is a result of Brexit, unfulfilled promises, mediocre economic development, and the turbulence surrounding former Prime Ministers Boris Johnson and Liz Truss, that at least is uh, said by the author of the study, the well-known John Curtis. Political upheavals are taking place on the British Isles at the moment. Polls indicate that the Conservatives will indeed suffer heavy losses in the upcoming general election. And um, you might think that Sunak has miscalculated here. 
The parliament in London has been dissolved and the election campaign in the United Kingdom is indeed already in full swing. On July 4th, the, the approximately 46.6 million registered voters in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland are called upon to redefine the balance of power in the British House of Commons. The trigger for the early elections was a sensational decision by the incumbent Prime Minister Rishi Sunak. The Conservative Tory leader attempted a kind of liberation move after his party's local election debacle in early May. In the polls, however, the opposition Labour Party is indeed still well ahead of the governing Tories and now the reform program. Labour leader and opposition leader Keir Starmer spoke of an opportunity for change for the better and after 14 years it would be time for a change. Stop the chaos, he called on the British. Start a new chapter and begin rebuilding. Prime Minister Sunak, on the other hand, campaigned for votes with, among other things, far-reaching tax cuts, as I said. And at the same time, he presented himself as the guarantor of security and economic strength. Now is the moment for Britain, he said in a speech in the pouring rain outside his Downing Street office at the end of May, to choose its future and decide whether we want to build on the progress we have made or whether we risk going back to square one with no plan and no certainty. Well, for Sunak, the July election is the first real test at national level after he was appointed party leader by the Tories in October 22. I am the, the one who is ready to take bold action, Sunak said. I have a clear plan and that is how I will offer you and your family security. It's still unclear whether Sunak's announcements will be enough to turn things around again, but I don't think so. The people of Britain are longing for change, said Liberal Democrat Party leader Ed Davey. And this election is our chance to finally bring it about. The Conservative Tories have been in power in the House of Commons, as the British Lower House is officially called, since uh, they defeated Tony Blair and the election victory of uh, David Cameron in May 22. Uh, no, they were defeated by Blair and won against Brown. In the regularly scheduled general elections in 2010 and 2015, the Tory camp was able to defend its majority. And even in the Brexit chaos following Cameron's controversial EU referendum and the unscheduled elections in June 2017 and December 2019, the Conservatives were able to hold on to the helm. British politics, however, did not settle down. Since the 2016 vote on the United Kingdom's exit from the EU, the British have already experienced five prime ministers from the Conservative camp. Cameron was followed by Theresa May and later Boris Johnson, then Liz Truss for a few weeks, until finally Rishi Sunak took over the government in Downing Street No. 10 in October 22. In the parliamentary elections on July 4th, all 650 seats in the British House of Commons are up for re-election. Elections will take place throughout the United Kingdom. That means in England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Each constituency has one seat to win and 650 members of the House of Commons each represent their constituency. According to the Parliamentary Constituency Commission, England will have 543 MPs, they previously had 533. Scotland will send 57 instead of 59. Wales will send 32 instead of 40. And Northern Ireland will continue to contribute 18 members of Parliament. The number and shape of the constituencies are based on population figures. Under British electoral law, the relative majority decides. That means voters only have one vote each. The winner in the 650 constituencies is the person who receives the most votes locally. The winner takes it all rule of the majority voting system favors local candidates and larger parties. The local voting shares of the losing competitors expire. The members of the British House of Commons are elected for a regular term of five years. Those eligible to vote must register in advance. The deadline for this ended uh, on June 18th this time. After that, Britain, Scots, Welsh and Northern Irish are free to vote at the polling station on election day or in advance by postal vote. 
The elections in the United Kingdom are traditionally held on a Thursday. Here in Germany, it's always Sunday. And according to British Electoral Commission, the polling stations are open on the morning of July 4th at 7 a.m. and do not close until late in the evening at 10 p.m. The counting of votes begins immediately afterwards. And we all are looking forward to those results then. And if you want to know more, the next video is right here in the end screen. I'll see you there. I'll be back.